Here's another finding the derivative using the limit process. Uh, I guess let me start with the good news. The good, good news is that pretty soon we introduce some rules of uh, finding derivatives that will help you stay away from this, but this is the proof of why it works. So let's uh, go through this one. It says find the derivative with respect to t of y equals 2 over t. Um, so we'll start off with this, that we're looking for the derivative of y with respect to t, and that's equal to the right to the limit as the change of t approaches zero. That's as we move only a small as we move only a small increment, arbitrarily small amount. Uh, and just by definition it's f of t plus change in t is the second y value minus f of t is the first y value all over the change in t and if this is bothering you please go back and look at an early, earlier video where I described why this is true but we're not proving this right now we're kind of starting from here so I guess we move on and we're just going to go here and just say that this is the limit as the change of t approaches zero and we're going to start filling in the blanks here and the blank is this it's right our, this is our function right that's our function right there so we get 2 over t plus change in t, right? That's this part right here, the function. The function is 2 over t, so we're going to put in t plus change of t. Here is the second y value. And here, minus 2 over t, all over change in t. And from here, it, frankly, it just turns into to algebra. So let me just go through this algebra really quickly, and it shouldn't bother you too much. Just don't freak out. It's... This is what you're going to find with calculus, I think, is that you get killed in the algebra. You don't get killed in the, the calculus. You get killed in the algebra. But so, look, these are just two fractions here, and I want to, I'd like to add them, subtract them from one another. But they don't have like denominators. So to give them like denominators, I'm going to multiply this side over here by t over t, right? And this side over here, I'm going to multiply by t plus change in t over t plus change in t. And remember, we're doing that because we're multiplying by 1, which doesn't change anything. Um, so from here, it should get pretty straightforward. I think just the algebra of it just looks bad. Um, so that would give us, right, I'm going to just set this, I'm going to actually just continue with my algebra. I'm going to keep writing my notation. And I want you to remember that professors and, and test scorers are sticklers for this notation part. So keep your notation constant, please. So t times 2 is 2t, right? This negative sign right here is this negative sign. This 2 that I'm writing here is this 2. And it's times t plus change in t, isn't it? Hopefully you're with me. And then the whole thing, right? Here we have a denominator now of t times t plus change in t. And over here we have t plus, uh, t times, wow, t times the quantity t plus change in t here. So that's all we're going to do. This t is this one, and they both have t plus change in t here. So t plus change of t. Well, that's a lot, isn't it? just for the algebra. Remember, all over change in t. This change in t, you guys, is this change in t right here. So try to keep this proportion. Now I'm going to just simplify a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify this. Just going to try to keep my algebra from getting away. So um, that will give us, I'm just going to start with the limit process thing again. So I'm still declaring that I'm going to take this limit at some point in my life. This 2t is this one, so 2. And then negative 2 times t is negative 2t, isn't it? Negative 2 times change in t is negative 2 changes of t. All over t times the quantity t plus change in t. So let me just show you just quickly where I am. Right? When I simplify all this, it gives me this back, doesn't it? It gives me all that back, doesn't it? This piece right here is this piece right here simplified, isn't it? And then lastly, down here at the bottom, down here at the bottom I have this change in t, so I'm going to put the whole thing back over change in t, so hopefully you can see that. Now what I'm asking you to do, just as a, in a form of algebra, is remember that we have the uh, rule of complex fractions, which says that if we have a over b, over C over D, what we really have is A over B times D over C. I believe that's called the means extremes theorem, I think. So if you don't mind, what I'm doing is rationalize this down here, put this over one. Now you can see, right, 
A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. So I'm doing that. This thing comes up, right? Not as C over D, but comes up as D over C. So this comes up as its reciprocal. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to go ahead and bring that up. Um, let me show it to you. This one right here is this one. And this, let me do that. This change in X, a uh, change, sorry, change in T here is this change in T, isn't it? Okay, so I can do all that stuff. Yeah, yes. Okay, so now what I have is finally I just have it down to one fraction, don't I? I'm going to multiply this out in just a second, but before I do that, let's take care of some more algebra. And the algebra I'd like to take care of is just actually gathering like terms. Remember that from algebra one. And 2t minus 2t is 0t. So just to rewrite this in simpler form again, is the limit as the change in t approaches 0. Is, here's this negative 2 change of t. So there's my negative 2 changes of t, right? All over this right here. t times t plus change in t, right? And then remember, I have this piece over here. I'm going to bring this over. Is there, this one is this one. I'm just bringing it in as a factor here, if you don't mind. And then over change in t. Can you see it? And look, all these are factors. So look at this. So what, what I'm noticing now is that I have a factor of change in t in both places. This one times this mess is just leaves it the same way it does was, doesn't it? So, but if you can see. If, because these are factors, these factors cancel. Change of t over change of t is certainly 1, so they cancel out. So this is getting, believe it or not, we're almost done. I hope this has uh, been helpful. Uh, let's do this. So we have limit of as the change of t goes to 0 again. We saw these factors. Please remember, factors cancel out, but terms don't cancel out. So that's what's going on here. This negative 2 right here is this negative 2. And then if you don't mind, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to distribute this t into this here. And t times t is t squared, isn't it? And t times change of t, remember, is t changes of t. Please remember, this is something that gets messed up tons. It gets messed up tons by people. That change of t or change of x is one symbol, like f of x. They can't be separated. You can't divide this by, by delta and and get this to go away. You can't multiply t times this and get the t to square. So remember, this is a singular symbol, if you will. Now, if you don't mind, what we can do is we can evaluate as the change of t approaches 0. Why is that okay now? Because look, if I let this change of t go to 0, look what will happen. Change of t is zero. Take the change of t out and set it equal to zero. Well, t times zero is zero, but we have a t squared here, don't we? So the whole function doesn't end up with a denominator of zero. That's what that's what matters. So we finally have our derivative, and our derivative is negative two over t squared is f prime at t. So. Look, you guys are going to be furious at me when you uh, figure out in the very, very near future that there was a much easier way to do this. But this is the proof and something about proof and pudding. I don't know how that goes. But anyway, good work.